<coughs> Good morning, all. Uh, uh, I'm Dr. Ima. I'm Dean of Faculty of Engineering and Building Environment at Massa University. It's good to meet you all here, even though it's virtually. So I wish you all a very good morning, safe and healthy situation, and all you uh, hope all you are safe and stay home and calm. So uh, today we're going to have a webinar and discussion regarding the great minds behind the engineering and the engineering projects. So as you know, guys, uh, this year, we, especially from Faculty of Engineering and Build Environment, we have webinar series, which is a start from different start the basic of the engineering ideas and what are the ideas and how we can develop these engineering students to be ready for future uh, jobs and industry. So this is the start and introduction of, of all webinar series until hopefully by the end of the year, we reach to the very advanced application of all these engineering projects, particularly related to green technology, sustainability, and IR 4.0, which you know that it is our main vision and mission, particularly related to engineering and engineering and build environment. So, I wish you have get the idea what are the great ones and what are the advantages of engineering. And after that, we slowly, slowly, we have various webinars by our lecturers, experts from industries and all the professors, great professors, be invited to join us for various discussions. So we give you this idea of what are the great minds behind engineering and what is the application in real story. So, Today, particularly, we're going to discuss about the great one behind the engineering and what is the engineering and how we can apply to our students, especially in related to Mass University Faculty of Engineering, how we train our students and make sure that our students are ready for the real industry and ready for what industry demands nowadays, which as you see at the end, we reach to the Green Tech Sustainability IR 4.0, which is our main vision and mission. So let's start with very basic definition. What are the great minds behind the engineering or engineering project or engineering models? And how in mass university we want to train our students to become the best engineers and they related to current industry demands. And when you go to the industry, you don't have any issues. So, how the engineering architect quantity serving can solve the problems, how they can improve our board. So let's let me open a bracket here related to faculty of engineers. You know that we have these engineering pro programs. We develop our architecture, quantity savings are related to each other. So what is our plan? We want to plan IR 4.0, sustainability, green technology, all come together to make a great project, which is really applicable to all engineering fields and also build environment field. So this is the reason that I'm going to discuss about architects, quant servings, everything by our today webinar. Okay, so by mornings, you are a poet. It can be true, competed true by engine for engineering for architect, quant serving, because by the mornings you have the fresh energy to think that how you want to make your world is a, in a better world. How you want to make a beautiful building such as this that I can show in this picture, great architecture design in London. So how you want to make your beautiful buildings. Look at the Massa universities. Look at the new hospital project that the Mass University is going to start. How it's beautiful, yes. So how you want to be a poet, how you want to develop your knowledge to make your world as a beautiful place. By the noon, you are humanist. Obviously, this is the main vision and mission of engineering. How to make human life is more comfortable for all. So this is the main reason that they mentioned that by the noon you are humanist, okay? So you make the life better for any human. So any project that nowadays you can see that everything's working regarding the machines, cars, airplanes, buildings, construction site, and so on, all it makes you to be a real human. And, af and uh, after that, obviously, by creating all the problems and find various solutions, you are a real builder. You make a building construction to make a life a better place. 
Okay, so grain the minds behind the engineering. So basically, it is any engineering, any people involved with such a field, you are advanced in solving problems. So solving problems, basically, it is the best things that every engineering, every person come to the engineering field, it is your passion. It's how when you see problem, okay, this is when the engineers smile. So the advance in solving problems. Creatives. All these solving problems automatically you make you a creative person. It makes you a person that can be a creative means you give a solution for various problems, for various then you give a various solution for every problem, not only one solution. So it means that you are creative. Passionate to help people and make their lives better. As I just mentioned, you are humanist. You are real human. You have the passion to make every life better. Okay, let's nowadays give a very current situation, this COVID situation. Obviously, you can see how engineering is involved with this. You, app, you have lots of application via your phone. Easily, you can uh, track every, every record data that's related to COVID. Very simple. Uh, example related to this and finally turn ideas into reality so when in the morning you give an idea maybe so many people say oh my god are you real think about this kind of thing that this idea is working yes actually you are the person that makes the ideas into reality so these are the great things that every engineering can have behind their engineering minds Okay, so sometimes they say no, engineering is very boring, uh, very boring programs. It's not true. Basically, engineering by math, science, and arts, they make a very beautiful thing. So the problems are engineering inspiration. So how basically in engineering programs and any related engineers program, we make sure that our students gain the related knowledge related to current industry demands. And when they graduate, we make sure that they graduate and they immediately find the job, which is our main, main vision and mission, particularly in Master University. So for your information, engineers programs are accredited by Board of Engineering Malaysia. This Board of Engineering Malaysia, actually we have graduate attributes for degree programs, which we call it Washington Accord. So what is this Washington Accord or nowadays, they call it OBE or Outcome-Based Education. Basically, according to Washington Accord or graduate attributes, we have to follow 12 learning outcomes. Means when the students graduate, we make sure that these students have 12 main skills, which if you have this 12 one, so, uh, definitely you can find the best uh, position in the real life. So the first and basic and fundamental part is the engineering knowledge. But this engineering knowledge is not normal engineering knowledge. We give the students complex engineering problem. So you can see Washington Accord number one to number four completely complex engineering problem, which is start with engineering knowledge. Problem analysis. You analyze the problem. Based on that, analyze this Washington Accord number three, you design and you investigate to find the best suitable design for the problem that you have. And finally, modern tools usage. This modern tools is not only applicable of the, the some modern software related to your programs, although it's also you can go to laboratory and you use the modern tools to test your ideas. So this is the first thing. However, surprisingly, you can see from 12 learning outcome, only five is related to knowledge or complex engine problem. The rest, as you can see, Washington Accord number six to Washington Accord number 12, it is so-called, as we call it, soft skills. So imagine why this soft skills is important. Basically, imagine you go to the industry, you are the best engineers in the world with the highest knowledge, but you cannot communicate. So do you think it's useful? No. So that's why now in Washington Accord, they really insist on the some complex activities, such as engine and society, environment and sustainability, 
ethics, teamwork, communication, project management, and finance and lifeline learning. So these are the soft skills that each engineer must know to become the best person in a group working. So engineering and society, environment, and sustainability. Great ideas. Each student must have this knowledge to become successful in the current industry demand. Definitely you must have ethics, teamwork, communication to communicate and develop and transfer your knowledge in the best way to make sure that, okay, you have this current knowledge and you know that how to transfer your knowledge to other team members and lifeline learning and project management. So these are the graduate attributes, which is according to Washington Accord, which as our program is accredited by Board of Engineers Malaysia, all these things working. And we give the students real case studies. We give the students real project, site visit and industry relation to make sure when our students graduate, they all have these main skills. Okay. Ex again, complex engineers problem is start with depths of knowledge, familiar with issues, extend the codes, and finally with independently, you can solve the problem. So basically, this is the basic of the complex engineers problems and the basic of the each uh, engineers pro programs and how we design our program, how we design our, uh, our uh, syllabus, our assignment, how we make sure that our master's students is ready for current, uh, what industry needs. So this is exactly is complex engines problem is what exactly we do. So typical design process definitely start with define of the define the problem. Then we have the problem. Then the problem is that it's real case study for each subject, each program we have this the problem. So then you gather the information. Obviously, nowadays you have library, you have an internet, you have the real case study, which you do the survey and all the information you gather. Based on this, you start to be creative and you start generate multiple solutions. After that, you analyze and select a solution, the best solution based on the thousand of solutions that you find, and then you test, implement modern tools to just and analyze the situation and apply, investigate, everything's fine, you find a solution. So this is engineering design project. Okay, how we claim that engineers minds exactly follow these things? Okay, now I give you various, various examples that to make, to give you example. Obviously, everybody knows that engineers are creatives. What are the examples? We have thousands of examples, even Look at the outside the window of your house or your office or rooms. You can see various examples. I don't need to give you too much example, but give, let me give you various examples that I can um, involve with you. For example, in morning you go, you go out, we have a heavy traffic jam. How we can solve it? Obviously with highway transportation and transportation engineers at, as part of civil engineers programs. So we have various bridges and so on, but let me give you a great example. Have you seen this Denmark disappearing roads? So this Denmark disappearing roads is fantastic project. Two and a half miles under the water, which is connected Denmark, uh, Copenhagen to the Sweden. Yes, so it is fantastic. So imagine that in the, the tunnels is about 20 segments, 55 tons, and each one is settled in the seabed trench. So it has five individual tubes and two traffic loads, uh, two, uh, tra uh, two lines for the train and one for emergency. So imagine how it's beautiful is that. It's real great piece of the engine projects. Or don't go so far. Just start in the Kuala Lumpur. You know that one of the best tunnels in the world, it is the uh, a smart tunnel in Kuala Lumpur. How does it function? So basically it has three lines. One is for a storm water, two for the traffic roads. What will be happen after that? After that, when you, uh, when we have raining season. So, I mean, normal is normal. Two traffic lane is passed on and we have just a, a storm water tunnel. Then when we have a raining season, 
this become real stone water and, and the stone water is diverted into a stone water tunnel and the traffic go on as normally then when the we have a very uh, heavy uh, uh, raining season two upper roadways are closed to traffic automatic uh, gates i mean the gate automatically will be closed and finally all it become actually water involved is so uh, you imagine that how the engines project involved with the highway and traffic, uh, hydraulic civil engineering. Again, we have this automatic gates, which is IoT, which we have this uh, uh, perhaps mechanical, electrical engines. On how these engines must work behind this great project. Okay, besides of this, look at the three George dams in China. One of the world's largest hydropower mega project involved with civil, mechanical, electrical, lots of various, various fields of engineers. So it has 32 giant generators. Okay, so this actually, it can produce about uh, 22,000 megawatt, which is actually approximately, it can produce energy enough for 16 million people. And this actually, they use about 70,000 cubic meter of water, it's, uh, which can go out from this uh, dam. So for this dam, they use enough uh, concrete and steel, which is actually is enough for 63 EFO uh, towers. So imagine how this great project is working and how the great mine be behind the engine's projects, okay? Another project, look at the foundation engineering as part of the geotechnical engineering in civil engineering projects. So you can see various, various projects. So you can see definitely, or, I mean, look at them here, you drive to highway in the in Malaysia, you can see uh, lots of retaining walls, lots of application of the how to control the, uh, the slopes in Malaysia, especially in Malaysia, it's very hot topic because we have lots of raining season and lots of failure in our soil. However, now we have sustainable solution for this slow stabilization. So what's the sustainable solution? By using the vegetation on a slope. So as you can see nowadays in a stuff, this Ugly, not very beautiful uh, solution, which is full of concrete. We have this uh, vegetation on a slope. This vegetation that you can see on a slope basically is not randomly used. It is used for a slow stabilization. So basically this vegetation have various effects. It's a mechanical effect because of their roots, their weights and their charging. Also it has evaporation, which is hydraulical effect. So based on this actually, the real project conducted that it is really improved more than 10% for a slow stabilization. Okay, so it is based on the uh, root and the hydraulic and mechanical effect of the tree. So based on this also in Master University, we offer master classes. It is in sustainable land style risk uh, analysis I hope that everyone can join this great project and this great course that you can involve your sustainability design of the geotechnical design. Okay, so just open bracket here. We have a great engine's mines that they control that Eiffel Tower by actually injecting the take out some soil, injected the concrete. Now they control the Eiffel Tower. Uh, they control the tower actually here. Then. Uh, Sorry, Pisa Tower, yeah, <laughs> uh, I made mistakes. I'm, apology for that. So they control this and it is a great engine mine, but still they keep it in this way because actually it's kind of tourist attraction. Or look at our great Petronas Twin Towers, that this Petronas Twin Towers, actually you can see it's beautiful, but imagine that 120 meters below the ground, we have the foundation of this. So 120 meter, only the foundation. So imagine that how it is working, how the engine's mind, it help us to have a more beautiful and more great words and more great uh, projects in our real life. Okay, besides of that, again, related to foundation, engineering, and the 
green technology, we have wine turbine farms. This wine turbines, this is one of the great examples, of offshore wine turbine farm, which is actually great. One of the best examples, you can see the wine turbines in the Denmark. How is it working beside the engine, electrical engines that they use this, um, this actually the motors that the, how they transfer the wind energy to the electrical energy basically as a civil engines you can think about that how the foundation work when they actually they are floating in water and how they can control such a project so floating wind turbines concept is one of the great new ideas that nowadays especially in such a countries like at Denmark they use it and they Wine turbines, hopefully you can visit the one day. It's so beautiful, yes? So basically they apply this cyclic loading, this foundation and perhaps soil interaction and this cyclic loading uh, applying to this foundation. So this is how the engineering analysis, particularly related to geotechnical analysis and foundation engineering analysis is applicable to such a green technology projects. Finally, we have another project, Burj Khalifa, one of the tallest buildings in the world, 829.8 height, and it is amazing project. So if I want to talk this project, obviously it takes one day for me to talk. But I give you one example, how the engines are creative for such a project. So the engines think how they can send the concrete in the hot water of the Dubai and how they can pump the concrete to the tall buildings. Yes, so the super high pressure pumps, concrete pressure up to 400 bars. They create this uh, concrete to go to the top and even they make ice liquid concrete when they go to the top by this temperature, it can be useful at the very high level in the tall buildings. So imagine that how they are creative, how smart and how they can apply the engineering knowledge to the real case studies and find a solution for various cases and find a solution for different problems. So this is how engineering might work. So let me give you this idea that it has uh, this 600 meter, uh, actually this elevators, it go up in 45 seconds, means 600 meter per second for 124 floors. So imagine that how they create this elevator that 600 meters per second go up and still you feel safe and comfortable in the elevator. And finally, we have Sydney Bridge. Sydney Bridge is actually created in 1932 and it has 440 feet uh, world tallest steel arc bridge and it is 39,000 of towns so uh i just know that okay it seems that some we have a technical error in our presentation okay so what next <clears throat> actually it's end of presentation already it's okay so hopefully you enjoy so far. So what's the next, what is after all this project? Definitely what engineering is uh, doing. So basically what problems next engineers will be solved? Definitely involved with the construction and green technology. So sustainable development in construction and green technology is the next solution that Everyone want to think about that and it is our new vision and mission in Massa University and we're trying to solve the problem based on that. So by involving the engineers program, design your future to design our future. Engines are driving our future. Hopefully you understand and enjoy this uh, basic of the engines programs. Please join our other seminars which we invite experts from industry and our professional lecturers to talk about various programs involved with this series. We start with the definition of the basic of the engineering and finally we find out what is the uh, future advanced application of engineering. So by this I can stop my presentation. Thank you so much for your attention and hope you enjoy. Uh, your very short discussion that we have. Thank you so much and have a nice day.